Hello everyone and welcome back to another a very exciting and a pretty instructive chess game by Bobby Fischer. In this chess game Bobby Fischer has the white pieces and his opponent was William Neiman, an unknown American chess player. So this was from a 50 board chess simul from 1964 in the city of Cicero in United States. So let's see what happened in this chess game. Fischer starts the game with e4, we have e5, and then f4, and this is the king's gambit. Pretty rare, even in 1960s, but against uh, amateur chess players, it was playable, and also at club level, it was still popular, I believe. So e takes on f4, accepting the king's gambit. And then bishop to c4, developing the bishop, d5, charging and uh, sacrificing a pawn back and this is known as uh, the bled off variation of the king's gambit accepted bishop takes on d5 knight to f6 attacking the bishop and in this position actually queen to h4 is also possible instead of developing the knight so queen to h4 is also possible and after king to f1 white is losing the casting rights but the computer chess engine says that the position is for about equal, so white is going to develop the knight with a tempo and pushing the pawn, liberating the bishop, and uh, slowly improving the position. So, but we have knight to f6, which is also popular. Uh, so after knight to f6, we have knight to c3, bishop to b4. So in this position, Bobby Fischer was hoping th that black is going to capture the knight. And he was planning to capture back with the d pawn, both liberating the queen and also opening the diagonal for the bishop. So, both opening uh, the d file and also opening the diagonal for the bishop. So, knight to f3, and actually, this is exactly what happened after both players castled. Bishop takes on c3, d takes on c3, and Fischer opens the d file and also attacking the f pawn. Now black made his calculations and he pushed the pawn, attacking the bishop. Fischer goes back with the bishop and then queen to b6 check. And after moving the king, what else? Black captured the pawn with a tempo. So black is a pawn up and also black is threatening knight to f2, forking the king and the queen. Fischer calmly defended queen to e1 and defending on f2. Rook over and now threatening knight to g3, discover attacking the queen and winning the queen. So, actually, actually in this position, there is two very good moves. Can you see the best move in this position for white? What would you do if you had the white pieces? So, actually, Bobby Fischer played the second best move according to the computer chess engine, which was a pretty good move. Well, Fischer played bishop takes on f4. A very good move. So, in this position, White is basically defending on g3 and also getting rid of the annoying pawn. So knight to g3 is not possible because of queen takes on g3. But in this position, the computer engine told me that bishop takes on f7 is also a very strong move. And this is the strongest move according to the computer chess engine. It's a mystery to everyone if Bobby Fischer missed this or he basically didn't want to play this for avoiding some complications in a 50 board chess simul. So this is forking king and the rook. If capturing uh, the bishop, then we have knight to g5. And if capturing the knight, simply black is getting checkmated, check, and there is no defense. So in this position, if king to f8, then simply knight takes on e4 and also attacking the f-pawn. So if defending the f-pawn, then white is smashing through with bishop takes on f4. If capturing, as you can see, this is looking extremely dangerous for black. So probably black is not going to survive this. So in this position, if uh, instead of king to f8, let's say king to g8, then again capturing the knight and this position is a little bit more dangerous for black because white is threatening knight to f6 after capturing the knight, capturing the rook. So knight to f6 check, forking king and the rook, capturing the knight and losing the rook. So anyway, 
and still attacking the f pawn as you can see so there is no time for defending so this is actually a bishop takes on f7 was a very strong move but okay this is also fine bishop takes on f4 by bobby fisher knight to d6 by william neiman and in this position he is basically discovered attacking the queen with the rook defending the rook and attacking the bishop so both pieces of bobby fisher is under attack maybe in this position defending the queen blocking the queen with the bishop comes to mind bishop to e2 comes to mind it looks like a safe move but bobby fisher played an incredible move in this position he sacrificed the queen after bishop takes on d6 what else rook takes on e1 or rook takes on e1 and all of the sudden we can say that white is at the driver's seat so threatening checkmate at the back rank black has a back rank issue and black pieces are lacking in coordination they're also lacking behind in the development only the developed piece uh, is the queen so the only only the queen has been developed and look at this position white all of the white pieces function white has a very incredibly active position so anyway black is defending in this position bishop to d7 both developing and defending the back rank but fisher played knight to g5 attacking on f7 so we have knight to a6 but it is developing and opening the rook but it is too late for any kinds of development in this position you might say what happens if kicking the knight to somewhere else somewhere else and also attacking on f7 so not moving the knight this is the best move rook takes on f7 is the best move and if capturing the knight then we have discovered check double check and king down is the only move and then checking the king this is a very strong move because if moving the king then black is uh, black is getting checkmated and if pushing the pawn uh, then we have rook check only move and still black is getting checkmated so interesting perhaps bobby fisher solved all this in a 50 in a 50 board chess simul so pushing the pawn doesn't work uh, this is why not pushing the pawn almost losing by force immediately after rook takes on f7 so this is why black wants to liberate the rook so opening the rook but it doesn't matter black realized that after rook takes on f7 he is still losing bobby fisher captured on f7 and after this move william neiman resigns incredible absolutely amazing it's a very short chess game uh, it's a miniature a miniature a 16 board chess miniature uh, but there are so many things to talk about this pretty interactive chess game and also it was a king's gambit chess game which is pretty rare of course especially at top level chess competitions against amateurs it was not rare i believe or at club level it was still popular uh, even today it is perhaps popular just for fun you can always play uh, king's uh, king's gambit of course there is no such rules that you should never do that uh, you can do whatever you want of course if it is fun anyway so uh, let's check out what happens if uh, some random move then this is the threat rook up rook to f8 rook takes rook is not possible so this is why opening the rook doesn't matter because this is checking the king with the rook and also checking the king with the bishop and also the knight occupies the escape square check mate discover check double check checkmate very beautiful and in this position if giving a flight square to the king if g6 then discovered a uh, discovered check to the king rook takes on d7 only move and then rook takes on h7 check mate again black is getting checkmated so g6 doesn't work because of capturing the bishop check also the dark square bishop is occupying uh, the dark square so we see the perfect teamwork of the two bishops of the bishop pair the power of the bishop pair so moving the king checkmate and what else uh, moving the king maybe comes to mind but this only prolongs the torture after bishop to e5 how to defend rook takes on g7 and after rook takes on after landing on g7 with the rook 
There is no defense basically against rook to g8 or rook takes on h7, both is checkmate. If rook to g8, this doesn't do much because of bishop takes on g7, only move, check, only move, and getting checkmated. So this was a very beautiful, very instructive 16 move chess miniature by Bobby Fischer. And it was also King's, King's Gambit, a rare and a beautiful stuff. So what do you think about this chess game? I hope that you have enjoyed watching this chess game. Sorry, this video is a little bit too long, but uh, I think uh, it was very instructive chess game. So I wanted to show some variations, of course. Uh, so, okay. I hope to see you again with more instructive chess games. Take care and bye bye.